今日はね、日本語の勉強方法じゃなくて、なんか自分自身の経験について話してみたいと思います。いつもどうやって日本語を勉強したか、日本語難しいから諦めたいと聞かれてますが、まあ正直に言うと、日本語は結構難しいんです。まあ1、2年間だけで、まあペラペラになれませんよね。日本語を勉強し始めたから、ちょうど、10年間経ちましたが、まだバイリンガルとは言えません。なので、自分の人生の一部を紹介していきます。By the way, this video is sponsored by GoGo n i h o n So, if you want to find out how you can live and study in Japan or learn Japanese online, then please keep watching. So, this video is kind of going to be like a mini autobiography, I guess. I'm going to talk about my life experiences related to Japan and learning Japanese. And maybe by the end of this, I will feel bad about myself for not studying more often, or maybe not. Let's see. So, I did recently pass in one, which, if you are unfamiliar with, there is a five level Japanese exam system basically. And in five is like the most basic, and in one is like the top. So, I'm done with it. We're done with the JLPT. Thank God. So, even though I passed, I know you're thinking, like, okay, well, then you're fluent, right? No, no. It's ultimately it's just a test score, and the test does not. Test you on speaking or writing. I don't know. I don't think it's like a totally accurate measure of real ability. So I don't know. I still have a lot of parts, I guess, in Japanese that like are way not not fluent. I'm not being humble. I'm being very serious. I do still think, however, that the JLPT is a great test to like aim for, to study for, because you need it. But now that I have finally passed in one, I can move away from studying in the context of the JLPT and more into studying like actual Japanese, like what I want to study, what I hear most, etc. Well, anyways, let's go back in time and learn how I got here. Also, physically, because if you don't know, I do live in Tokyo. So, let's go back in time to 16 year old Allison. So, my first experience with Japanese was when I studied abroad in high school for a summer. So, I was 16 then, and I literally had zero Japanese. I could not say anything at all. I couldn't read hiragana. I couldn't, I don't even know if I could introduce my name. I like nothing. Zero. So I lived in Saga Prefecture, which, if you've never heard of it, that's because there's not much there. Sorry, Saga. There's stuff, you know, okay. It's very countryside, very rural. I stayed with a host family that had basically just like an older host mom and host father. I think they were in their 60s, that's why I say older. They did not speak any English. Zero. Zero English. Uh, so. Yeah. Remember, this was 2013. It was a very different time. I did not have like Google Translate. I didn't have cell service. I was just alone without much assistance. I did, I think, have an iPhone. I think it was one of the first ones, but I couldn't use it. And they did have all the apps they have now. I think all I had on there was a like Japanese dictionary app. Maybe there was Google Translate, but it was, uh, no, no. You know what I did do? I had the dictionary app, and then my host mom had an English Japanese. Electronic dictionary, which you've probably seen like an anime, maybe. And all it can do is translate to varying degrees of goodness. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that was hard. So every day when I went to school, obviously I could not understand the lessons. Also, my classmates did not speak English. Thank you, Japanese education system. <laughs> like, no. So during class, basically all I would do is I had like one Japanese textbook, I think, that I brought with me or I found, or I don't know, I had got one somehow. And I just studied that in class every day, basically. Studied hiragana. Long story short, I went from zero Japanese to, I'd probably say I was probably about in five level by the end of it. This was in two months, like zero to in five ish, which I would say would be like simple introductions, like keiki ga suki desu, maybe. Okay, maybe, I don't know, around there. So then I went back to America. I didn't touch Japanese for like a year, and then I enrolled in Japanese 101 through 202 over the course of four semesters in college. And I'd say the first three semesters, I did not learn anything new. Maybe just like a few grammar points were new, but that's basically it. And then in the fourth semester, I finally started learning some new stuff. So I probably ended around. Honestly, high in five, low, low in four ish. That's the reality of college classes, guys. And then after these four semesters, I was fortunate enough to be attending a university that had a study abroad program in Japan. However, it wasn't like a normal study abroad program that I see a lot of people go on and have a lot of fun on.、Uh, this was less focused on fun and more on actually learning really intensely. So I was basically in, I was in a language school that was attached to. The university that was the sister school or something. 
of my university back home. And it was a language school. So like all my classmates were like Chinese or Vietnamese, etc. And this school, I think it was divided into four different classes, if I remember right. And I was put in the second lowest one. So I entered this in September. And honestly, it was like high school. I don't know how else to <laughs> describe it. Like we had to be there every day from like nine to three. They're very, very strict on attendance at these schools. You have to show up. And honestly, it was really hard. We were like, we had so much kanji to learn and you had to take the test like handwriting the kanji and everything and also yeah it was really hard but uh so we entered in september and then we signed up for the jlpt in three that early december and i passed it so maybe it was worth all the suffering honestly it probably was because this i'd say in my whole life this was the period where I improved the most in the shortest amount of time and like the most dramatic way possible. So honestly, I do feel like language school is the best way to study Japanese if you wanna improve it quickly. And if you're like me and you're really bad at like self-paced studying. And that is why I recommend for people who can't go to Japan, today's sponsor, thank you to Gogo Nihon for sponsoring today's video. So Gogo Nihon is a study abroad agency that helps students from all across the world live and study in Japan. They have already supported supported over 11,000 different people in helping to make their dream of living in Japan come true. So no matter if you want to go to language school, vocational school, even university, they are the number one study abroad agency for Japan. And Gogo Nihon helps students every step of the way from applying to getting a student visa to finding the right school for you, accommodation, and more. And they do offer support in seven different languages. The best part is this service is 100% free. But that's not all. Gogo Nihon also offers Japanese online online courses, which they created together with the best language schools in Japan. They have courses for many levels of Japanese learners, including complete beginners from zero. So if you want to start learning Japanese now, check out Japanese Online by Gogo Nihon. And the links are going to be in the description down below. So go check it out. I really do recommend language school. I, I do. If you're serious about it, I think it's the best way to go. So after I went back to Florida from my study abroad program, I didn't really study Japanese again for like until I moved back here on jet. That was like a two year gap or I kind of backslid a little bit probably. That's what happens. Don't stop studying like I kept doing over the past 10 years. So yeah, then I moved to Gifu Prefecture in to the mountains, rural, 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 where I taught English for two years. And I had to speak Japanese every day to the kids, to my coworkers, to everyone. So if you don't think you're gonna do language school, the next best thing would be to move to the countryside. Don't move to Tokyo, don't move to Kyoto, Osaka, whatever. Go somewhere <laughs> where no one else could speak English. Or like there's people, but you know, it's not like Tokyo at all. So I passed into there after one and a half years of living there. And honestly, the reason I could do that was not just because I had to talk every day, but because when you are a teacher, usually at least on jet, learning Japanese is kind of part of your job description. So when I had free period or something, or like during summer break, all I would do, I would just like sit there at the desk with a textbook and study every day almost. And then I'd self-study after work, etc. when we were getting closer to the test. Mainly it was like Wani Kani, the Shinzen, Kanzen, Shinkansen master, other textbooks, just etc. Yeah, when you can speak Japanese, your relationship with your kids, with your coworkers, your whole experience is probably going to be a lot better, honestly. But anyway, after that, I moved to Tokyo for grad school and my Japanese kind of didn't do much. Partly because Tokyo, you don't need Japanese as much compared to the countryside, but also because I moved here during the peak of COVID. <laughs> so all my classes for grad school were online. They were in English, by the way. So I didn't really go out much. Or like when I did go out, I'd just like order a coffee or something, which doesn't, you know, improve your Japanese that much. And while I was at grad school, I did enroll in a Japanese language class one semester. But honestly, um, I didn't improve, I think, like probably zero. I don't think I improved at all because of it. Honestly, people weren't very serious. It was online. No one had a reason to take it seriously because it was free. So I didn't take that again. But I did finally pass in one after two years of grad school this past winter. And I only passed it because I forced myself to self-study. And the whole two years, the really what I made the most progress in was probably kanji. I was doing kanji almost every day, like on Wani Kani. But honestly, I failed in one the first time. I did take it last summer, failed that. And then even the second time when I took it, I just barely passed it. It's like a really hard exam, honestly. And yeah. Now I am working at a Japanese company I just started this month. So I'm hoping from here, maybe in another year, I can make a video about Japanese and I'll be like way better. I really wanna improve a lot more because I have like a real, real tangible reason right now 
to improve, which I feel like I've lacked for the past few years. I need a reason. I need a, a why. And really that's what I think my whole Japanese language journey has been about. I only really improved significantly when there was like a why, a reason I needed to learn. It, look, if you just want to be like a translator who works remotely from the US, that's fine. But you're not going to need to focus on like your perfect spoken Japanese. But if you want to like live here or travel here, then spoken is more important than your reading ability. I don't know. I think about why you want to learn Japanese. What do you want to achieve with it? And then go from there. And it's not going to happen in a year or two. It's not probably unless you're wild maybe it'll take 10 years like me <laughs> i could have done it faster if i didn't take so many breaks and backslide but yeah we're only gonna go up here from here i want to study more i want to get better ha <laughs> ha so Thank you again to Gogo Nihon for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out the link down below in the description. You want to learn how you can study abroad or enroll in Japanese language courses online. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you started learning Japanese, what's your journey looked like, or even another language or anything. Because I feel like they're usually not very linear. Like the video, subscribe for more content about my life here in Japan, and I'll see you guys back here again soon. Bye!